going on filmmakers today I want to talk about Canon's new cinema camera the C70 which I am super excited about it's the f it is possibly the camera that I've been waiting for let's dive into it <laughs> So, I've been looking online, some people are talking about it, but I just feel like not enough people are talking about it. And maybe it's because it's a, it's more of a specific camera for a specific type of filmmaker or creator, and maybe that's me. Now, the C70 that just got released, some of the most, imp some of the key features that excite me the most are built-in ND filters on a DSLR style cinema camera. I've been waiting for that for a long time and they've somehow managed to fit it into this very small body. So I, I can't tell you how excited I am about having built-in ND filters. So wow, good job Canon, that's that's incredible. Let's go into B&H on my phone here and take a look at what we, uh, what we got here spec-wise. By the way, this is not really a camera review, it's just I want to talk about the camera, I'm really excited about it. Look at some of the photos here real quick. It's a good looking camera. And what we're seeing here right off the top is it, this is an RF mount. Canon has made an EF adapter for it for all your EF lenses, which is amazing. It's a full frame sensor. All these assignable buttons, SD card, slot holder, two slots, I believe. And right down here at the bottom, time code. Nobody's talking about this time code. This is huge. The two most important features here that excite me are built-in ND filters, and number two, time code in and out, which is still the broadcast standard, and I've talked about it before when syncing audio and having sync boxes that people, uh, most people are relying on waveforms, which is great, but time code is still king. Broadcasters still want time code sync, and it is the most accurate. So the fact that they've packed this into the handle down here in a creative way, uh, time code, is just really exciting for me. Time code in and out. So you got two very professional things packed into this very small cinema camera, and I haven't even talked about the specs in terms of quality of the video, but these are really key important features. Canon's really, I think, shopping this camera out to documentary filmmakers, people that don't want a big camera, people that want to be low profile, so not to distract the subject, not to distract the public when you're out there, people coming up to you asking questions about your camera. This is really low profile and it just looks like a stills camera and I really love this design. I've been a big fan of that. I sh as you guys know, I shoot with the GH5S which is similar size, kind of. This is obviously bigger but similar build where you're dealing with the the DSLR look, which people aren't intimidated by when you're filming with them. Here's what it looks like with the handle. It's pretty sweet. And it's got this big flip out LCD screen, which is pretty cool. Let's go back here and let's talk about quickly some of the things that I wish they weren't on the camera. But overall, I think this is gonna be my next camera that I'm gonna buy. That is, of course, depending on if Panasonic doesn't release a camera. I know Sony's planning on releasing a camera, and Canon's also gonna be releasing another camera this year, so we gotta stay tuned. So I'm gonna wait a little while before I purchase this, but let's talk a little bit about the negatives that I think this camera have. So as cool as it is that they have the time code, I, th I wish it wasn't really at the bottom of the handle there. I hope it doesn't get in the way of my hand when I'm holding it. But other than that, that's fine. The next thing that kind of bothers me is they have two audio inputs, but they're mini XLR. And it's difficult to find cables and adapters for that to go straight to normal XLR. But you know, there are shops out there, audio shops that will create cables for you and stuff like that. But I'm a little, bummed out about that but I understand why they did it to save space and maybe in the long run I'll find that I'm happy they have the mini XLR opposed to the big XLR keeping things small and the final thing that kind of bothers me but I understand again why they had to do it is that the LCD flip out screen blocks the audio adjustments your levels for your channel 1 and 2 and kind of the reason that's a downside for me is that I'm probably not going to use the LCD screen. I'm going to want to use my small HD monitor and have the LCD closed so I won't be able to access the audio levels so readily. You know, it won't be right there for me to adjust because I'll have to flip open the screen to adjust if I'm using an external monitor. But maybe there's a way to take off that screen. I'm sure there is. I don't really want to do that. So 
But these are just small things. I mean, maybe I won't even have to use my small HD monitor. Maybe I'll end up using this LCD flip out screen. I know it has waveform. It's going to have all those professional uh, focusing features, exposure features. So maybe I won't end up using my small HD. It's a pretty sweet camera. I have to say I'm really excited about it. It has a built-in fan, so there's no overheating. It's got an HDMI out, headphones. It's, you know, basically everything that I've wanted in a small scale documentary style cinema camera. So, I mean, I'm really excited about this. And one of the, one of the other things I'm super excited for is 4K. 120 frames per second, which I've always wanted in 4K, opposed to 1080. The GH5S does it in 1080, does 120 in 1080, but it has aliasing, is aliasing issues with it, and uh, it doesn't really look the best, unfortunately, for GH5S owners. But uh, the GH5S does do 4K 60, which looks amazing, so if we could get 4K 120, I would be super happy. Let's look at the specs real quick here. Highlights. Super 35 dual gain output sensor. I won't go into those sci that science, but it's very interesting. You can look that up. Other people talk about it way better than I will be able to. I'm not really that tech savvy. 4K 120, 2K crop 180, Canon log 2, 3, PQ. I'm not sure what PQ and HLG recording is, but uh, I know Canon log 2 and 3. RF lens mount, EF mount with adapter. Not sure what DIG exclamation mark C, DVC image processing is. 16 stops of total dynamic range, which is pretty incredible. Built-in ND filters, like I said, auto ISO and gain. A lot of people are talking about the auto ISO on this, and for documentary change going from indoor to outdoor, this could come in handy with unpredictable lighting if it works really well. So I'd be really excited to test out this auto ISO. Uh, dual pixel, we all know what that is. It's an amazing autofocus. But this camera does boast super uh, great results in low light. BNC time code, too many XLR audio adapters, dual SD card slot. SD card is another bonus here is we're not gonna have to use the CF cards, which I'm super excited about. So I won't have to buy new SD cards. So, you know, overall, I mean, let's look at these photos again. Just, a, I think it's a great looking camera. I think it's gonna be perfect for documentary style filmmakers run and gun guys like me. I'm really excited about this and I've always wanted to get into the C300 cameras, but, and I've used them before on other shoots, the Mark II and etc. but I just couldn't justify paying that amount of money and not being able to have those high resolution slow-mo frame rates. And it just, they were just still too big. It's once you build it up, it's just a, this massive unit and traveling with it is a pain. Maybe it's just me, but I find that I like to keep things small, portable. So this is really gonna be, I think, the camera for me. That's just my thoughts on the C70. I'm really excited about it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you guys. As always, thanks for subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed yet, consider it. If not, no worries, and I'll see you guys next week. Peace. Whew.